Hello, Happy New Year. I'm going to give you um, a quick lesson on Chapter 8, just an overview. You can still watch the lessons, you know, on the computer from each section before you do your homework. And I will do things a little bit different than the book, but um, the ideas are the same. Alright, I'm going to start today by reviewing how to reduce or simplify fractions. You had this back in Chapter 7 where you had to add fractions and then when you get your answer you have to reduce it. This is not in reduced form because this will divide by 5 and 25 will divide by 5. So to reduce you divide both by 5 and you get 1 fifth. That's your reduced form. You always have to reduce fractions. Put them in simplest form. What about 436? Is it reduced? Well, if you have an even number on the top in the numerator and in the denominator, if they're both even numbers, certainly it's not reduced. It will at least divide by 2, but in this case, if you know your multiplication tables, you can know that they'll both divide by 4. So, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 36 divided by 4 is 9. So, 1 9 is the, 1 ninth is the reduced form. What about 8 50ths? Is it reduced? No, both even numbers, so they'll at least divide by 2. Remember those divisibility rules that we learned? <clears throat> I don't remember what chapter it was, that we learned whether numbers were divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. Those come in very handy when you're reducing fractions. 2 eighths. Both even numbers, so they'll both at least divide by 2. So 1 fourth. And what about 3 eighteenths? Both of those will divide by 3. So your answer is 1 6. Okay, we're going to be using this concept, reducing fractions or simplifying fractions, in Chapter 8, which is what I'm going to cover right now. Chapter 8 is about multiplying fractions, okay? The basic rule for multiplying fractions is you just multiply straight across. You're just going to memorize this. You just memorize straight across. I mean, not memorize straight across. Multiply straight across. So your answer, what is one-third times two-fifths? Your answer is two-fifteenths. You just multiply straight across. The book will show you some... Um, models and things that kind of tell you why this is true but the basic thing you need to learn is you just multiply straight across when you're multiplying fractions now <clears throat> some fractions when you multiply them it is easier to simplify or to reduce before you multiply this example here i have a whole number 16 times a fraction when you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, the first step is to turn that whole number into a fraction. Any whole number can be rewritten as a fraction by putting it over 1. If you have 16 uh, cats, or if you have 16 divided by 1 cats, you have the same amount of cats. So, first step. Now we could multiply straight across numerators, multiply straight across denominators, and then reduce our answer. But it is easier, if you can, to reduce first. Do you see that you have a 16 on top and a 12 on the bottom? Do they have a common factor? Something you can divide out. What will go into 16 and 12? The biggest thing that will go into them is 4. So you divide both of these by 4. Okay, so your new problem will be 4 over 1 times 5 over 3. I reduced first. Then multiply straight across 20 over 3. That answer's fine. Or we can always write an improper fraction as a mixed number by dividing. What's 20 divided by 3? Sorry, I'm trying to film myself, so it's kind of shaky. 6 with 2 left over. 6 or 2 thirds. 
You being able to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number is something you should have practiced a lot of and be good at. But if not, just go back and do some more of those problems. Remember, an improper fraction is one where your numerator is larger than your denominator. Okay, let's look at this next one. We want to multiply 5 elevenths times 33 over 35. Can we cross out before we start? Can we simplify or reduce before we start? What about 5 on top and 35 on bottom? Do they have a common factor? Sure. We can divide this by 5 and this by 5. A lot of times we just cross out like this and put the answer there. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 35 divided by 5 is 7. This saves a little bit of space. What about 11 and 33? Do they have a common factor? What will go into 11 and 33? That would be 11. 11 divided by 11 is 1. 33 divided by 11 is 3. So by reducing first, we go straight to our answer. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 7 is 7. 3 7. 5 eighths times 26. What do we do with this whole number here before we multiply? Put it over 1 and look for ways we can cross out. Anything in your numerator can be crossed out with anything in your denominator. Our 8 and 26 have a common factor. Both of them will divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 26 divided by 2 is 13. Then multiply. What's 5 times 13? 65. And 4 times 1 is 4. So 65 over 4. And we could write it as a mixed number. 4 will go into 65. Let's see. 16 times with 1 left over. Your remainder goes over your denominator. Alrighty. I just have several more examples to do. 1 8 times 4. What do I do with the 4? It's a whole number. I'm going to put it over 1 to make it a fraction. Can I cross out before I multiply straight across? Yes. 4 I can divide by 4 and 8 I can divide by 4. I'm going to divide both of these by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now I'm going to multiply straight across. Once you reduce or simplify, then you just follow the rules of multiplying fractions, which is multiply straight across numerators and denominators. What about 3 8 times 4? Make it into a fraction. Try to cross out. 4 and 8 will cross out. They'll both divide by 4. Once you've divided those, now you use the rules to multiply fractions. What's the rules to multiply fractions? Multiply your numerators together, and then you multiply your denominators together. If you end up with an improper fraction, you can always rewrite it as a mixed number. 3 divided by 2. 2 will go into 3 one time with a remainder of 1. <clears throat> 1 fourth times 16. Make this into a fraction. What can we divide 16 and 4 by? They'll both divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Numerators together. Denominators together. And what's the same as 4 over 1? It's just equal to 4. 3 fourths times 16. Make that into a fraction. Reduce before you multiply, and multiply straight across. Numerators together, denominators together. So there's my answer on that one. What about 9 times 1 6? Change 9 to a fraction. What about 6 and 9? Can we reduce that before we multiply? Divide them both by 3. We don't always show this little step, but you're dividing both of them by 3. We'll get 2 down here, we'll get 3 up here, and then multiply straight across. 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times 2 is 2. 3 halves, or how could we write that as a mixed number? 2 will go into 3 one time with 1 half left over.
If you've forgotten how to change improper fractions into mixed numbers, you, this means three, sorry, three divided by two. This means three divided by two. Two times what is equal to three? That would be a one. Times two is two. Your remainder goes over your divisor. So your answer is one and a half. And then this last one, nine times five, six. Put your nine over one. We're gonna divide both of these by three. And then multiply straight across, 15 halves. You're going to set this up if you don't remember how to do it in your head as a dividing problem. 15 divided by 2 is 7, remainder of 1. And here's my last part of chapter 8. How do you multiply mixed numbers? If you have two mixed numbers like down here at the bottom, how do you multiply those together? We have to remember how to change mixed numbers into improper fractions, which we've done, but you just gotta remember it. You multiply here, and then you add. So two times four is eight, plus one is nine, and what's your denominator? Two. You multiply here, and then you add here. So 21 plus one is 22. What's your denominator? Three. So that's how you change mixed numbers to improper fractions. How do you multiply mixed numbers? You first have to write them as improper fractions, which is what we just did, but let's do it again. You multiply these and add that. So eight plus one is nine over two times 21 plus one, 22 over three. Can we cross out before we multiply? Can we reduce? Three. We'll go into both of these. So divide them both by three. Two. We'll go into both of these. So divide them both by two. And your answer is 33 over one or just 33. Hopefully this will help you in chapter eight.